Wataru Sakamoto, the legendary assassin of the Sakamoto Days universe was once feared for his skill, power, efficiency, and most of all, his versatility as a fighter. To all within the world of assassination, he's undisputably the pinnacle of strength, completing every single mission without fail. Well, until he left it all behind to create a family and settle down. On the other hand, we have Toji Zenin, the god of war incarnate, bounded by a heavenly restriction that removes all of his cursed energy in exchange for providing him with peak physical specifications and performance. As Toji eventually left the Zenin clan, he became an overwhelmingly successful mercenary for hire, known as the Sorcerer Killer. Being able to even defeat Satu Gojo when they first met. And in this video, I'll be pitting these two behemoths against one another and attempting to decide which one comes out on top. Before you get into this though, I do want to lay out the rules and scenario of this fight in order to make it a little bit fair. Because if I don't, we'll get the Toji would prepare three days in advance and wear Sakamoto down comments. So let's lay out the framework. First, this battle will take place in the current art exhibition arc of Sakamoto days. Second, Toji will be one of X's strongest henchmen. Being the one who just so happens to run into Sakamoto rather than being paid to target Sakamoto directly and vice versa. Toji will have access to his entire arsenal from the hidden inventory and last, neither will be going into the fight completely bloodlusted just to incapacitate or defeat because it'd be out of character for Toji to fight such a high level opponent to the death without personal grudges and Sakamoto has a promise to his wife to never kill and not only this, Sakamoto becomes way stronger when he becomes bloodlusted, but we don't have enough feats from a bloodlusted Sakamoto to really gauge him fairly. And I don't want this video to be like, Sakamoto can do this, but if he was mad, he can do more. I don't think that's fair to Toji. With that all being laid out, let's get straight into this battle. And of course, manga spoilers for both series. We'll start off by going over a summary of both fighters, prioritizing feats that really matter. Starting with Toji. When we're first introduced to Toji, he's scouted by the Star Plasma Association to be the mercenary that can assassinate Riko Amanai, the Star Plasma Vessel, who is currently being guarded by the strongest sorcerer himself, Satoru Gojo. Before directly attempting to attack Gojo though, he decides to slowly whittle him down by placing a bounty on Riko that will force Gojo to keep himself awake for 48 hours straight in order to keep her safe. He won't be doing something like this to Sakamoto, but this is more so to indicate that he's relative to Sakamoto Day's best when it comes to battle IQ and exploiting an opponent. When Toji actually does step up to the plate and fights Gojo himself, he starts to battle with a blade in Gojo's back, stabbing him before Gojo even realized he was there. Just so people don't think Toji is the Flash, this was more so because Gojo wasn't able to perceive Toji due to his lack of cursed energy. As the fight begins, Toji is swallowed by a manipulated cursed spirit and he's able to instantly cut through it with ease, displaying his insane strength. Nah, I'm just kidding. What allows Toji to really cut through this monster like butter isn't Toji's own strength in this moment, but it's actually the blade he wields, the Split Soul Katana. This katana's ability is to ignore all physical toughness of whatever it cuts and instead directly attack the soul of its opponents. It can only truly be used at this level by those who have the ability to perceive the soul and luckily, Due to Toji's physicals being boosted by his heavenly restriction, he's able to seize souls and by proxy, use his sword at its highest level. We're not going to say that this sword is going to one shot and kill Sakamoto for this fight, but we will say that it will one shot and knock him out, just for the sake of the battle. As Gojo goes to attack Toji, Toji is able to dodge his attack and go in for his own, showcasing insane speed here as he jumps from platform to platform within the battlefield before Gojo even knows what's going on. And later on, Gojo even states that he could not see Toji's movements, forcing him to resort to using a maximum blue to reduce Toji's movement options. As we know, Toji then uses the fly heads as a smokescreen and dashes right behind Gojo, sticking the inverted spear of heaven into his neck and cleaning up shop. The inverted spear of heaven really wouldn't be a factor in this matchup since Sakamoto has no cursed energy or cursed technique or anything like that. However, it's still an extra weapon at his disposal. The last of Toji's cursed tools in this kit is his chain of a thousand miles. This chain endlessly extending as long as the user does not allow the back end to be visible and thanks to Toji's worm keeping the back end inside of its mouth, it's never visible and thus can extend forever. Toji is able to attach his weapons to this and allow himself to attack with range. Toji also carries a normal handgun, sword, and knife. 
enough about his tools, and now let's go on to some of Toji's best feats in terms of stats. To start with speed, his speed is absolutely ridiculous compared to most in the series. As his speed was said to have surpassed the three finger Sukuna, and not only this, he's able to mix up Saktu Gojo and the six eyes with his speed alone, and whatever this is. But I mean this was only shown in the anime, but Gege looks over and approves it so I believe we can say it's canon. To use some of Maki's feats, since he and her are stated to be exact equals as of Maki's complete awakening, even when faced against opponents who could potentially have more speed than him, he has access to precognition, allowing him to accurately predict what his opponent's next moves will be, which in turn lets him keep up with them, which is how Maki was able to eventually defeat Naoya in the first place. This fight also does showcase good speed feats for Toji, however, exactly what one should take out of this when it comes to their speed just causes so much contention and debate from the community that I doubt we'd ever get a singular answer from it. As for strength and durability, I say Toji's most notable feats were being able to tank a red from Gojo after his awakening, being able to completely crush and dominate Dagon, a special grade curse and one of the strongest special grade curses to exist in the series. Mind you, it's stated by the grading system that cluster bombs might work when it came to normal, much weaker special grade curses, those way weaker than Dagon. Lastly, and most importantly, is Maki's fight with Sukuna, as she alongside Yuji were fighting a Sukuna at 15 fingers whose techniques were extremely weakened due to Megami's interference. As we know from Sukuna's fights at 15 fingers, he can brush off getting hit through multiple buildings, combo someone as powerful as Jogo Midair, and slam him through 7 floors with relative ease and Perception Blitz Ryu, who was fast enough to send Yuta flying and catch up to him to continue his combo as Yuta was flying across multiple buildings. Maki being able to keep up with and draw blood from this Sukuna is an insane feat for both her and Toji. However, remember that Sukuna's curse techniques were heavily nerfed so this doesn't imply that her and Toji would be able to keep up with the Sukuna who can use his techniques. However, it's more than implied that his stats remain the same. To wrap up Toji's segment, he's the god of war made man, the Monkey King. Now to examine Taro Sakamoto. Formerly known as the legendary hitman, Sakamoto was undisputedly the greatest assassin of his time and has a good case for being the strongest character of his series. To go over Sakamoto's feats, I'm going to go straight into his stats instead of going over a specific fight then into the stats because whereas Toji showcases his entire moveset in an arsenal in one fight, Sakamoto's moveset and traits are widespread across the entire series as he is the protagonist. First, we'll go over Sakamoto's strength and durability as in the very first chapter of the series, we're able to see that a rusty Sakamoto is able to use rubber bands as a gun and cough drops as the bullets to replicate and match Shin's gun where they had a firefight outside of the shop. This is honestly some nonsense that Mappa would add to a Toji fight scene if the idea came across their minds. Sakamoto has also been able to stop a speeding bus with the usage of a stop sign. Although it wasn't instantly stopped, it's still quite impressive. Sakamoto was also able to stop the top half of Tokyo Tower from falling on the civilians by holding it up with a wire that came out of it. As for some durability feats, he's been able to easily withstand a waterfall with the water pressure of 10 tons, was fine getting blasted out of a train toward another oncoming train and proceeded to continue fighting with no signs of damage and even completely brush off water pressure that was quote unquote powerful enough to destroy a semi truck. He's certainly not lacking in comparison to Toji when it comes to superhuman strength. And his speed, well, is up there as well. Being able to leap from building to building faster than a speeding bus, deflect a bullet shot toward him by spinning out a cough drop toward it with perfect accuracy, disarm an entire gun pointed in his face and punch the person holding the gun before they can even react. And mind you, these three feats were within the first two chapters. In the flashback arc, he fights against Kendaka, a member of the Order with Lightspeed Shoes, and the fight starts with them getting blitzed and toyed with, but as the fight continues, Sakamoto is eventually able to hit him and even blitz him at the very end. Sakamoto and Nagumo were inferior to Kendaka in this arc, but they were still order level in this flashback, as they were offered their positions to join right after they defeated Kendaka, so Kendaka is no pushover. And most importantly, Sakamoto's been in a high difficulty fight with Kanagui, a member of the order. And in the series, the order is a sub-organization that contains the strongest assassins of the JAA, or that's short for the Japanese Association of Assassins. Sakamoto when he was at his prime was a part of this organization alongside monsters such as Takamura who was the one who actually cut the Tokyo Tower that Sakamoto prevented from falling onto the civilians 
and Nagumo, who is currently fighting against Gaku, another character who is able to vaporize human heads with a one inch punch. And that character who is destroyed by Gaku's one inch punch is easily superhuman himself, but just not as much as the big boys. Although Kanaguri's exact placement in relation to the high tiers is widely debated because of his feats, it cannot be denied that he is currently relative to the strongest since he is in the order, and Sakamoto being able to combat him despite how rusty he's become in the current time of the series shows that he's catching back up to this level. The author of Sakamoto Days, Yuto Suzuki, really likes to keep the viewers guessing as to who's actually stronger than who, so we'll be waiting a while before we get some answers. As for Sakamoto's tools, well, he's essentially the John Wick of the Sakamoto Days universe, being as capable with a pencil as he is with a handgun, and usually, Sakamoto tends to use whatever is within the area of battle that he's in. For example, since he's inside of the art museum for this matchup against Toji, he'll likely find some way to use whatever's in the art museum as a weapon, such as how he uses his phone and earplug he finds in a drawer as a Kusari Gama. He also doesn't like to rely on weapons though, as he believes that doing this is the mark of a third-rate assassin. And not to mention, he does have an entire hidden arsenal of almost any weapon that exists in real life in his house. However, he doesn't really carry any of these around since he doesn't kill. And he also has an apron that he tends to wear that's durable enough to tank explosions. So I'll give him that since that's all he really needs. Since he'll be in a museum, he'll be more than likely to find weapons that Toji just wouldn't be expecting. With all this said, who do I see coming out on top between the two? When it comes to strength, I think that I'd give it slightly to Toji due to the anime nonsense of him pushing rocks with enough force to vaporize Megami's rabbit escape and him being able to do damage to Dagon. However, I don't think Toji gaps Sakamoto completely and that they're still close, and with strength comes durability. Toji also has access to a little bit of regeneration, so that helps him. Comparing their speed, I'd say that Sakamoto's faster. Toji does have the disadvantage here of not being the protagonist of his own series and thus having way less feats to pick from, but I think Sakamoto's feats of dodging while catching multiple sniper bullets and realizing that he's only caught 99 out of 100 in the end and his weaker, younger self fighting with Kindaka and managing to tag him without attempting to predict where he lands such as Uzuki said, it's just overall more impressive. But I wouldn't count out Toji here because Toji still has access to precognition, this allowing him to see and predict the movements of Sakamoto. When it comes to skill, Sakamoto is just far and away better. He specializes in hand-to-hand -hand combat, whereas Toji seems to specialize in assassination. Sakamoto can again utilize anything he sees and gets his hands on as a weapon and that is his best and preferred fighting style. When it comes down to it, I think Sakamoto takes the fight 7 out of 10 times with his ability to adapt to his opponent's fighting styles and his insane versatility as a fighter. He's just bound to find a weakness that he can exploit from Toji and somehow catch him off guard. However, Toji still has a winning condition in the soul splitting katana which would one-shot Sakamoto. But the question is, would he land it on someone as experienced as Sakamoto? What I believe is, if the stars align and Toji bet everything on one attack with it, sure, he can find a way to pull it off. But I'm sure that once Toji tells Sakamoto about what he can do and all of his abilities in order to boost his stats up, Sakamoto would do everything in his power to prevent that blade from even making contact with him. With that said, let me know what you guys think down below. If you think Toji would win more than Sakamoto would, if either one has no chance, whatever. Tell me what you guys think. With that being said, thank you guys for watching the video and I'll catch you all in the next one.